And welcome back, friends. We are in the final part, part three of the two-headed dragon tutorial. Now, if you've made it this far, I just want to give you, you know, a round of applause. You're making it through one of the most challenging origami tutorials out there. And we're just about at the end where we're going to take our, you know, kind of shaped base and turn it into a final product. And that is really exciting. And what we're going to be doing in order to achieve that is something called wet shaping. And we have our methyl cellulose ready, as well as just a regular old paintbrush. And we're going to be using this on our paper to really refine it. Now, the last tool that I recommend you use is a hair dryer or blow dryer. Um, and if you don't have one of those, uh, you should be able to find one. They're very, very cheap. If not, you can probably use like a fan that would work kind of, uh, just not as quickly, but whatever you can do to get yourself on those tools, you know, it, it should be very accessible and very cheap no matter where you live. And once you have your tools ready and your methyl cellulose ready, we can begin shaping. So let's get started. Now, this tutorial is going to be very, very long and kind of intense. So I actually have a challenge for those out there folding this. If you are within the first 10 people to fold this design, um, you will receive the one-headed dragon and three-headed dragon crease patterns. Currently, the only way to access those is to join my YouTube membership. So if you just want to see it and you haven't folded this, you know, feel free to check that out if you have some extra cash and would like to support the channel you can go down below join the discord or the youtube membership and you'll get access to those on discord but other than that um, the first 10 will receive that as a prize for completing this model now <laughs> as of making this video there's actually about three or four people who have already folded this whole design and have claimed those prizes so you know be fast because there's only six remaining spots. But yes, let's get started. So I'm going to keep this guy over here just as reference. And then we have our unshaped one that we're working on, as well as our methyl cellulose. I'm going to try to keep it in the corner with our paintbrush. Now, often when I'm working, my paintbrush like will get dried out from the methyl cellulose. But what's nice about MC versus glues, you can just get it wet again and it softens the brush. So that's my first step. I'm just getting my brush ready and it's pretty much just that. Now let's take a look at this monstrosity. So we've got a lot of work to do and ideally we want to get it kind of set. So we're going to do the whole tail first because that's actually going to help us, um, at least have something to hang on to while we're shaping everything else at and it gives a good base uh, to start um, like you can see here it's very rigid and it's just nice to have the tail done now what's going to happen with this tail is the axes is actually it's folded in there's no axes uh, but to shape the tail we're going to do a outside reverse fold kind of like that to go all the way down and along our tail you can see it right here on this one. And that gives us kind of that nice shape and it's a little bit cleaner without all the layers sitting on top. Um, so keep that in mind as we do this. And what we're going to do is we're going to fill a lot of these intermediate layers with MC to get it wet. And then once it dries, it's gonna dry in place. I'm gonna focus the camera a little bit more so it's a little easier to see. I think that's about good. That's where we're going to be working. Cool, cool. All right, and let's get started. And so I want to put MC on a lot of these layers. It doesn't have to be every single one, but I'm going to avoid putting it on the top because we don't want that to get too weak and tear. Uh, but let's get some MC going. So we can kind of get a thick glob to just put in the middle for now. And I'm going to roughly try to go through, you know, as many of the layers as I can. And I'm going up to basically where the leg is. I don't want to do the whole body yet um, because we're not ready to shape that. So don't go past. And if you do, what's nice is with the MC, you can just get it wet again. and It'll unfold, but it makes it a little bit easier just to leave that part alone. And we're going all the way basically up till the tip of the tail. 
And kind of same thing. I'm not doing the tip of the tail yet. Um, because we're gonna we're gonna leave that for later. But I'm I'm able to feel that this paper is starting to get pretty wet, which is good. And what's really gonna help is after we get quite a bit in, as I squeeze the layers together, I'm not sure if you can see on camera, but there's some excess methyl cellulose squeezing out where there's too much. And I'm just gonna take my brush and kind of brush it along the seam to help it fill in some spots that maybe there wasn't enough MC yet. But it's gonna start to stick together. It won't really stick together, but it's gonna start compressing the paper um, a lot thinner than it would have without being wet. And this whole layer right here is pretty dry, so I'm just gonna add some more for this top layer. Just kind of like that. Get it around to the spikes. Doesn't matter too, too much. Then we're gonna let that squish down for a little bit as we work on the next side over here. So let's get that working. Start in the middle with a big glob. Push this all the way in. And we're going a little bit faster, just trying to get all these middle layers. Now our, it's gonna take some time to dry even though we are using our hair dryer. Um, but when it dries, it dries extremely solid. I think you saw me pick up the dragon bites, the finished dragon bites tail and it's, it's super rigid. And even if you try to like bend it into a different pose, it's kind of gets its own memory in that form and will kind of bounce back almost, which is a great property of MC. And it's why it's very similar to wet folding. Um, whereas shaping with a glue, is less like wet folding. It's more like you're sticking layers together and it holding in place. In this place, it's it's closer to just getting the paper wet. And then as it dries, it takes on a new memory and can be undone uh, with just water again. All right, so we have both sides kind of ready to go. And right now I'm just squishing all these layers together and trying to see if there's anywhere that's kind of dry. Um, Generally, when you do this wet shaping, you don't want to get it too, too wet because oftentimes it can start warping the paper or it makes it wrinkly, especially depending on what paper you're using. Like if you're using double tissue, it's going to get wrinkly way faster. But if you're using something that's handmade, you can get it a little bit more wet and generally it'll be okay. But we've got that going and it is pretty solid and you can see it's really starting to thin out. Now, before I fold it into the outside reverse fold, I'm going to get my um, hair dryer ready. And I'm gonna show you a trick that I like to do with the hair dryer. And it actually involves one more tool, which is just a little clamp. So, right, I only have two hands. And sometimes it, I need both hands to hold the paper in place while it's drying. So what I do instead is I just put my hair dryer on the table and then I use a clamp and I'm clamping down the wire to the table. So it's out of frame, but that way it doesn't move. Um, that's just my solution. You might have a better setup than I do for this. Now let's get this one out of the way. And we're not gonna turn on our hair dryer yet because we need to fold this. So what we're gonna do is fold it back into place like this, just like it was before. And then right around the base of the back two legs is where we're gonna start our outside reverse fold. And it's gonna start gradually. So it's not like we're folding, it's 45 degrees down. We're kind of folding a very thin, thin, um, angle across the whole sheet and then kind of where it gets to the tip it's you know almost fully inverts and this is really only possible once when the paper is wet um, once it dries up it's going to be way too um, hard to do this and then without the MC doing it on its own all the layers are going to splay out 
and you won't be able to get it exactly like this. So I'm just gently kind of doing this so I can keep it clean. And I want kind of the points where the fold we're doing becomes inverted, like right along where that spike is. Uh, and this is kind of just personal preference where I have this line defined. Um, to me, it looks a little bit cleaner in this way. And then we're just folding it down kind of over that area with the legs just so that that's hidden and that that can kind of stay together. And so I'll get my hands out of the way so you can see what our like final product is going to look like essentially. There we go. So it kind of looks like that. And then now the last step we need to do is give it the curve. So we can see on this one, it's, it's very curved and actually we're going to try to do <clears throat> the, the, the same kind of curve and it's going to curve around this way. And it's also going to drop down a little bit. So I'm just using my hands since it's wet, I'm going to be able to curve it. Now the top layer here is kind of unfolding itself. So you got to be careful because I probably need to fold this a little bit more aggressively right in the middle because the paper is quite thick. So like that and start curving it. And while I'm curving it, just because of the, my paper and the way I'm doing it kind of quickly, I have quite a few wrinkles on the inside of the tail. Uh, now, if you wanted to be really careful, you could probably smooth those out, but at least the outside is nice and smooth. Um, so just, you know, take, take some time. I'm actually going faster than I normally would go just so that I can keep this tutorial, you know, not too insanely long, even though it's still going to be pretty insanely long. Um, but the, the most important part is just that it looks good, right? So really just try to fold it to what you think looks good and go from there. And so this is looking pretty all right. This looks pretty bad because we haven't touched it yet, but that's okay. We're going to shape this once this whole tail is dry. Uh, but you can kind of see with out doing anything, the methyl cellulose is already allowing the tail to kind of hold its position. Um, however, if we just leave it like this, it's probably going to start unfolding itself as it dries, which we don't want. And that's where our hair dryer comes in. We're going to use that heat to really lock this in place for a little bit. And then when it fully dries, it's going to become rock solid. So I'm just going to do a quick look over. Um, you can see I have way too many layers spilling over the side like that. I'm going to try to cover them if I can, so at least a little bit. Not perfect, um, but <clears throat> I think that will be slightly missed. It's kind of okay. All right, and let's get to hair drying. So, like I said, I need to use both my hands to hold this tail into place. And then I'm just going to turn on the hair dryer and hold it like this while it dries. Now I'm going to leave the microphone on, but this part is just, you know, <laughs> we're not going to show the whole drying process, um, but assume that I held it here for about a minute to let it dry and we'll come back in a little bit. All right. So we dried our tail and I realize I probably shouldn't give free advertisement. Um, so that's what the tape's for, but this tail, it's not fully dry yet, but it is holding on its own and it's like, you know, maybe 50% dry and that should be good enough for now so that we can continue and just work on other things and let that fully set later. So let's put our hair dryer down. I keep it close by cause we're going to be using it quite often. But let's start working on something else. But that process is essentially what this wet shaping is. You know, we're folding, getting a little bit wet, holding position, blow drying, and 
getting it to dry. So that is the simple 101 of doing that. Obviously, it's a little bit more difficult than that to actually make things, you know, look good. It's, I explained it simply, but it's, it's not easy. It's, it's not like, you know, magic. Okay. The next thing we can do kind of similar. So now that this is kind of locked in place, we can probably set the body a little bit. So all these layers here, including the back spines, they're going to be kind of pushed into this position. I think that would be good to get started. We also have these side spines. We're going to kind of ignore these for now. And I plan on just getting a bunch of this wet, not getting the necks wet yet, just up to the necks and up to the wings, as well as just this whole layer between all the spikes. So let's start on that. We got our MC again and our brush. Start on this side first. And once again, when there's a lot of layers, we want it to be a, um, a good hold. So we can use quite a lot of MC, get all the layers wet. Uh, we're kind of like retreating the paper, essentially. You can think of it that way. Right? Retreat paper so that it's a nice square that's crisp and good to fold with. And then in shaping, we're treating it to be in the shape that we want it to be after folding. Um, so kind of the same concept. And I find it to be very fun to do this process. And I've been enjoying using MC over glue. And that's why I'm teaching it in this method. Um, because I think, I don't know, it allows some more flexibility with how you shape. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with shaping with glue. So if you're using glue, uh, the process is going to be quite a lot different. You can't exactly do the same thing that I am doing, uh, but maybe you can think of the decisions on maybe the order or something in the same way. So now I'm being very careful not to get the actual spikes wet. Those don't need to be treated or set. Um, and if I want to fix them up later, I can you treat them individually. But for now, I don't want them to get, <clears throat> you know, warped or anything while I'm working on it. So. I'm just avoiding that. Now the paper is relatively wet and I want to hold it in place where I want it to be, just something like this. All right? Now, one thing that you can do if you're a little bit lazy is you can take a wire and wrap it around this portion so that you don't actually have to hold it <laughs> with your own hands. Um, however, you can probably just hold this with your hands if you get a good grip, but maybe you don't want to fully blow dry it or you have some time. So you're waiting for um, like overnight, you can just use the wire. Now, if you'd use a wire like this, you gotta be very careful because you don't want the wire to make an indentation in the paper. So what some people do is they actually take like another sheet of paper and wrap it around so that there's a whole layer between the wire and the actual model. I am not going to use that because I'm not going to wrap it tightly. So the other thing you can do is just make sure the outside layers are not wet. And if they're not wet, they won't leave a mark um, unless you tie the wire really tight. So that's the other thing I'm doing is I'm not tying the wire very tight. I'm just doing it enough to kind of hold its form as it dries a little bit. So something like this, and that's just going to make it easier for me to show the hair dry part with the hair dryer. Now, normally if I was doing this on my own, I probably would just hold this with my hands, um, but this is going to help keep it locked so that I can show me blow drying it. But now well, all that's left is to blow dry it. All right, so we let that dry. I ran the dryer a little bit longer just because we really got this area wet. And now I'm actually not going to take this wire off. I'm just going to make sure it's not too tight around our body um, because it still needs to dry. If I take it off, it's kind of just going to open up. And as it dries, it won't really do what we want it to do. 
So let's just get this wire out of the way. And kind of like the tail, right? We're just, it's in a spot where we can just leave it to dry out later. And it's gonna be okay. We don't have to touch it too much. Now, later on, what I might do is also use methyl cellulose on the bottom layers, like once it's already set. And this is just gonna refine it even more that we have a solid base down there. But generally, this is starting to work. We're looking pretty good. I think the next things we're going to do is maybe the neck and then the legs. Um, I think we're going to need to do the neck a little bit before we do the legs, um, just because there's a lot of crazy layers going on. And once those are a bit more set, it's going to be easier to position the legs in the end phase. So let's go ahead and do that. You can see me adjusting some of the layers. I'm kind of just visualizing where I want them to stay. Um, but let's start with this head and with this head, we're not going to be worrying about the actual head yet. That's going to need his own shaping, which will be a little bit more, um, precise than what we're doing now. Right now we're kind of just doing layer manipulation, uh, which is like the easy part of shaping. But once it's done, we're going to, it's going to enable us to do the more detailed parts. So. Yeah, a little bit of MC down these layers. Um, these ones, you can kind of get it in most of these layers. Now, since it's getting wet like this, we also kind of have to choose our pose for this neck um, so that I can dry in place. Um, now, we also have the underside, as I mentioned. So if we don't do the pose yet and just want to worry about the layers, we could also do that and then just get it wet again when we want to pose it. Uh, but I think we can just do it all at once here. I'm being kind of careful. Get these layers closed up. Since it's wet, it's now possible to do this because it'll stay. Um, it'll, or at least it'll, it should kind of stay a little bit easier than previous. Now we don't want our neck to be too, too thin because it's just going to look really awkward. So, you know, if you miss some layers or if it's still kind of wide, that's actually a good thing. We want some width. And then if we look at our um, dragon here, we're going to try to do the same pose. So this one's going to go out to the left a little bit and then back over to the right to straighten out. And that's because we're going to be photographing it from the side. So this right head is going to angle more this way. That way, when you get the side profile, you're going to be able to see both heads like this, like that. So that's, that's our goal in the pose right now for these necks. So this one, I'm just going to do something kind of like that. That way it's out of the way of this head, uh, but still just kind of makes sense. It's not too cluttered. Now on this, you really don't want to use the wire on this neck. The layers are just a little bit too thin. And since it's going to be very visible, um, you just really don't want to do that, or you'll probably get that ugly wire um, mark remaining. Now, one thing I'll give as a tip is when you're blow drying, um, on something like this, where there's a lot of surfaces that are showing, if the surfaces get a little bit wet, I recommend trying to you know, use your hair dryer on cold, if it has a cold air option, um, and if not, put it on low. So normally I blow dry it low because if I put it on medium or high, it starts blowing other parts of the paper um, in ways I don't want to. Uh, but, you know, for this section, for like really easy parts, I'll probably just do it on high uh, to get it faster. But for more delicate stuff like this, I recommend putting it on low or on the cold setting. Um, and that also helps it to warp a little bit less. So... We're just going to do that. Once again, I'm going to set up my hair dryer because I need both my hands to hold this in place and we're just going to let it dry. So we'll come back right back. All right. So we have our neck done and honestly, I don't think I gave it enough time uh, to dry. We're probably going to have to do a little bit later. We can see there's like a big gap right there, but I'm going to let the rest of it dry a little bit um, just because it'll help us later. Um, but you can, you can see the difference 
right? One of them is like this one is obviously done. This one's not quite, but we can refine it as we go on. I'm just going to be showing some of the steps as we start shaping and then let you kind of go from there. So I think what I'm going to do is start by showing what I do to shape some of the legs. And then after I just do one side, this other side's going to be pretty much the same. Um, so that should be okay. Now the legs, we have some different legs on this dragon. They're a little bit wider. I gave just one more unit in length here, but I actually think these proportionally don't look as good. Um, so that's why in our design, we have the smaller front legs, larger back legs. I like these a lot better, uh, but we still need to shape these out. So there's a couple things to do. There's one to get it into position and pose. And the other is some of the smaller details like the claws. Um, so what we're going to start with is just the general pose. Uh, so you can see here, actually, it's it's kind of weak. Uh, we won't be able to get the, the full final pose until this wing is kind of set in because this joint is going to keep flapping out, but we can kind of start. So what we're going to do is we're going to look inside these layers. And there's not too many. But I'm going to try to find around the halfway point and MC each half. So between this half, these two layers, and between these two layers. So let's grab our methyl cellulose. Got our MC. And I'm going to apply MC between these layers. Now, I don't want them to stick together in the middle. So I'm going to leave the actual middle dry. And I'm going to squeeze the wet layers together just to help them start to stick. What this is going to do is provide us with some structural integrity to actually shape with because you might feel on your model that it is like way too thin to actually hold shape and in fact no matter what you do it probably won't hold shape and that's where our mc comes in handy because even though it's thin layers it's going to allow us to shape it quite well there you go and just like that that's all we're going to do for now and I'm actually going to use my blow dryer and just dry it in place because uh, we want that to kind of set and then we're going to shape out of it. So I'm not going to show the blow drying. I'm just, I just assume I blow dried it and then it dried. So we're going to come back later. So our leg is just about dry. It's not fully dry yet. Honestly, it probably should be more dry. So try to let yours dry. Uh, but I have an example of what kind of leg we're going for. Now this is the three-headed dragon and so it's kind of similar. We have this outside reverse foldish thing. We have a slight joint right here but overall the leg is relatively thin um, and it just stands nicely on its own. So that's kind of what we're going for here. Now we have our reverse fold like that so later on it's actually going to push forward. And this is something where actually I'll just do it right now, but it's not going to be dry. Um, but something to think about is you're going to have some MC on the inside here and probably in the back to keep this angled the right direction. Now, if I do it now, and even if I let it dry a little bit, it's probably going to undo itself as we go on. But that's generally the idea. You just want it in place like that. Now, as for the actual shaping, See if I can show the underside of that leg. You can see that the layers are pretty much just wrapped around on the inside. And it makes it almost like a three dimensional leg. Like everything is kind of round. And so to do that, it's not, you know, a full fold. You're kind of just doing very slight mountain folds along this edge. So what I'm going to show you here is I'm just pinching. Let's get this a little bit more in focus right here. I'm just kind of pinching down like this to get some shape and along the top as well, just to thin it a little bit more. So it's out of frame, All right? And so that would be like 
our little joint right here. I'm going to use this with my other hand. Um, right, so we're tucking just a little bit of the layer in. And then same thing on the other side. Now, honestly, this would be a lot easier if I had actually let my paper dry, but because it's wet, it's kind of super flimsy. So I recommend you to let yours dry a bit more uh, before you do this. It's going to make it like way easier. Um, there you go. You can start to see that our leg is thinning out and it's starting to get a little bit round. And then... Um, <clears throat> We want to just get like a slight point on there for where the joint is going to be. So what I do is just like a very small crimp, kind of like that, and it angles the leg forward just a tad, just like that. And you're going to see that roughly. Our leg is in that sort of position and it just really needs to dry more. Maybe I did this a little too early, but you can just gently massage the paper kind of in, into place of where you want it to be. And then once again, just then even at just this stage, grab your um, hair dryer and dry it like that. It's like right like that. So let me do that really quick. I'm just going to do that live to show you. And it's a little too squished. I don't want it to be too mushed. So I'm rounding it out just a little bit more before I dry it. Something like that. And dry it in place. And we'll, we'll come back when it's dry. All right, so it's been, I don't know, maybe like 10 minutes and now it is way more dry. Now the leg is looking a little bit too thin. So I think later on what I'm gonna wanna do is buff out this side using the paper that's here. And then, um, yeah, just get the top part at least a little bit wider. I kind of thinned it a bit too much, but that's not too bad. It's going to be okay once we kind of do a little bit more work along the neck just to make things proportional and get this big wing out of the way. But for now, that's going to be fine. We're just going to leave it. I'm not going to do the claws yet because I think the paper is still not quite dry enough to do the claws. But what we can do is prep the claws. So if we look at these claws here, then these are along the edge or the very corner actually of our paper. And what I recommend is just to get them treated early. So to avoid the same issue we had earlier with the paper being too flimsy is I'm actually just going to apply some MC to the claws themselves. And then when it dries with the layers together, it's going to make it a lot stronger and easier for us to shape. So just getting these claws wet and then squishing the layers together. Now, if you didn't fold these very cleanly, and the layers are very messy, then this is a good time that while it's wet, when you put them together, um, make sure that the layers are nice and clean, or if they're not clean, at least that they're sharp. So something like this, make sure their layers are just nice together and to a point and just let them dry like that. And uh, I actually recommend you do this to all the claws on all the feet. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not exactly going to show that here, but you should do that before you start shaping. Um, it's just going to make it a lot easier. And so this last claw, just get some more MC on it. Like this. And some on the inside of that layer. And close it up and just let that dry. And now those will hopefully dry at the same time that 
<laughs> we're going to finish the leg later and it's going to be all good. So front leg is just kind of at a standstill. Now let's work on the back leg. So we kind of had some dry shaping going, but now we're going to really set it in place with our wet shaping. So it's kind of widened out, but we want it to be like this, right? So now this is where some of the more detail oriented and skilled shaping with the wet shaping is required because you need to understand how the paper works. So when the paper is wet, it's going to be able to hold this position if the high tension points are wet folded and you know dried in a way that those hold place. So what do I mean by tension points? If I, if I pinch here, I can actually feel the response of the paper underneath me on what's pushing back. So when it's pushing back, that means that is kind of the area we want to tackle because we don't want it to push back. Like if it doesn't push back, then it'll hold in place, right? And you can see in between those layers there, it's really thick and that is one of the tension points. And there's some on both sides. So that is where we want to focus on with our MC. So I'm gonna get some MC and put it right along that tension point. Really get that wet. And we're just going to do it for this side for now, just because it'll be good for the tutorial. Right. So notice I'm not putting it any on the outside. It doesn't really need it on the outside. It needs it on the inside where it's going to be holding that shape. So now when I press it in place here, if I let it dry, it's going to dry like that. Right. And I'm probably going to need a little bit more. And I also need some on the inside of this leg. Now I can't really show this in the tutorial because just, you know, it's not really possible, but yeah, I can show my best, but just get that brush in there. Um, all right. I think you can understand what's, what's happening and just getting it wet and then holding in place. Right. It's like that. And then from here, now we just need to get it to dry. So once again, same thing, I'm going to get my blow dryer and blow dry it. And we're back. And if I show the leg, you can see right now it is holding in place. <clears throat> and now we basically do that same concept, but apply it to each of these joints. So we need to reinforce that section and this section and this. Now we also want it to be the correct bend. So if I hold that in place for now, right, it would be nice if the bend was a little bit more exaggerated like that. And then same thing like on that side. So same concept, we can get that tension point and also right here wet with our methyl silo. So let's get our brush back and our MC. And um, again, not too wet, but just right in that tension area. And then ideally you can get some underneath those layers as well. That's always better if you can get it underneath. And then hold it right there. And what we can do is I can also feel stress, right? We can see where the paper moves when I bend it like this. There's some stuff going on there. So that's also where we would need to add some MC. Just like right along this whole joint here. Not too much, just enough. And hold it like this. And get that to dry. So I'm going to blow dry it and we'll come right back. All right. So again, we're making some small progress. Now we got this kind of 90 degree angle here. And lastly, we want to really bend this one in. So kind of the same concept. Now you can see we have all this leftover paper on the other side. So it's a mix of those swivel folds that we folded from the last part. And essentially that's going to be the tension points that you want to apply your MC to and really just get it out of the way. So again, it's not super strict on where these are because it gets more and more organic the more you pose it and try to make it look natural, which is good. 
But that also means you're going to have to take some creative liberties to see what looks good, what look, what doesn't look good, and go from there. And that's ultimately going to help out your final piece and your final pose. All right, so we can see from our example, this one we went a little bit less aggressive on our legs, but you can kind of see how they turned out. They look nice and clean, and that's that's how it works. So <clears throat> same kind of deal. I'm gonna put some MC on this and leave it up to you to decide where you exactly you want to post it and get these extra bits out of the way. That was probably way too much MC right there. Um, that was not all along the tension points, but that is the general concept. And then after that, we have the claws to do. I'm gonna try to show as much as I can on camera on the process I do, just so you can kind of see me shape. Um, and again, I can't tell you on yours what looks good or not because I can't see it. So again, that's just your judgment call. It's probably not gonna look exactly like mine, which it shouldn't because it's your shaping. Not my shaping, but you can kind of see what I'm going for there, right? And maybe you want to replicate that. And then if that's the case, you can go for it. There I got that. Got rounder. Got, got tucked in there. And then I'm feeling another tension point just along the top there. So I'm going to try to get some on the under layer, some MC on the under layer so that it dries. Just like we have it like here. I got all that paper on the side. I'm going to fold into swivels if possible. Uh, if not, we can do it when it's when it's dry too. We just really want kind of the form to set without undoing everything else too. Now, uh, normally I take a lot longer than what I'm showing on camera here just to let things dry. So keep that in mind. Um, you probably can't just do this in one sitting. You're going to need to let the other part of the leg dry first a lot more and then go ahead and work on this section. So that's why I'm having some problems here. It's because I didn't let the rest of it dry, but essentially that is the concept and I'm going to blow dry that in place and it's going to be relatively good enough. All right. So the legs are still kind of drying up and I don't really want to touch the claws yet while they're still drying. Um, so normally what I would do is look for something to work on that won't affect the other things. And in that case, we can do a little bit of the wing specifically some layer management with all of these things right here. Now, also what I'm going to do is you can see that like on our three headed dragon, our the photo angle is like this angle, right? So we, we folded and shaped this. So it's meant to be viewed at this angle where you can see the wings clearly. And then for our two headed dragon, kind of the same thing where if we go from this angle, this wing is down, this wing is up. Now, um, probably for, I don't know, dra dragons don't really exist, right? But if it was meant to fly, these poses don't really make sense, but they allow it to be viewable from a lot of the angles. And so that's kind of the goal on my shaping that I'm gonna show you. One of the wings is gonna lift higher, the other one is gonna be lower, just so that you can see nice work we've done. And so in that case, we are going to take this wing and angle it up this way. And that's going to be possible by getting these layers wet and simply just doing a little crimp right there to lift the wing up. But it's going to look a lot cleaner if we get these layers out of the way. So similar to the tail, we're going to get that wet with some MC. And now, right, we, we previously did MC on that body, uh, but not up to the wing. So now what we're going to do is MC into the body and the wing joint. So that's going to be important. And then try to get all these layers, if you can, wet, especially in the middle, so that it just soaks through all the paper. Gets it nice and ready to shape. You don't have to go overkill with the MC, but definitely get enough. Um, you know, it's generally forgiving. Like if you put too much, just let it dry a little bit before you start shaping it. And you can tell you use too much if your paper starts to like tear a little bit. 
the outside layers. You don't want anything to tear. So if it's tearing, then you definitely got it way too wet um, or your MC is not thick enough, uh, but just let it dry and then try, try later. But generally that seems to be good enough. You can also go from the bottom side, which uh, I don't know if I need to do, but I might do a little bit. Sometimes from the bottom side, you get some layers that you missed on the top. And since we're doing um, a lot, like the wing is very heavy, so we want it to be strong. It's good to do it on the bottom as well. So this is more like what we did for shaping the tail, just with a lot of layers and a lot of weight. And then we want it to hold in a specific, you know, place. But you can see that there is a lot of steps between, you know, getting things wet and then letting it dry. So hopefully you can tell that, you know, <laughs> when complex models like this, uh, we say it takes like 20 hours to shape. Um, this is kind of what you mean. You need to have some patience with each component to get, let it look good. You can't just do it all at once. Um, there's a lot of time you have to spend just even thinking about what you want to do. You know, I'm speed running this a little bit because I, I already know what pose we're going for as we're teaching. But for yours, if you're doing it kind of custom or even felt just followed along for the first time, you might find it a bit difficult to know exactly what to do. So, you know, take your time and spend it thinking as you're working on this. So all I did there is try, I'm trying to fold the layers really deep into that fold we did when it's wet because the less extra layers exposed the cleaner it's going to look right there so we're trying to hide some of these extra layers by just pushing them inside that top layer as we close up our wing kind of like this and then while it's wet like i said we're pushing it upwards so we're rotating it up so that the wing swings kind of this way and it's just like a valley fold right there now our wing is a little bit too long in that sense we might actually change the, the way our wing is later but generally that is what it's gonna look like and from there again I would blow dry it and probably get these layers even cleaner um, if I wasn't filming it as a tutorial. Uh, but yeah, so that is the start of the wing from this side. It kind of looks just like this. From the top, we're going to be able to see this big, massive wing come across. And again, I don't like that. So I'm probably going to hold it there and hold it in like right here so that all these layers don't show. And let it dry like that and so we'll be back after i blow dry it and it sets all right so we have our wing in position and i blow dried it it is not fully dry but what i've decided is i think this is all we're going to do for today um i am going to leave it to dry and we're going to come back and continue with the tutorial uh, on a different day so that everything we just did can really set. Now, one thing you might notice is even while I was talking, this wing has started to fall back down like that. And we don't want it to do that. And it's doing that because it's not fully dry yet, but we have our wire that is still holding the body together. And this is a technique I like to do. So on the part that's not wet. So this part is wet. We didn't do anything here yet dry is I'm going to try to attach the wire and just wrap it around this portion very gently and just so it grabs on here and you can see that now we have tension with this wire pulling on the wing to hold it in the correct position for it to dry you just need to get it a little bit more set I could just manipulate the wire a little bit to get it to kind of bend in the area we want it to. Um, and that will help it to stay in position and not fall out of place overnight. 
So that's a little tip. Again, I don't want to wrap the wire around this section. Otherwise, it's really going to like show the wire marks. Uh, so this is a way to keep it clean and really get this joint set. And even now, if I want to reinforce it more, since I'm going to leave it overnight, what I can do is just add more MC in this position and it won't fall out. So right in these like trouble areas or high tension areas, like right in here, just add some more MC. And this is really going to help solidify it. And then I mentioned this earlier in the video, but to lock in the belly, I'm also going to add some MC in there. Uh, now this one's a little bit risky since the wire is a bit more tight around the torso, but it's not actually really going to be seen too much. So it's kind of okay to get that area wet. Just like that. And we're going to come back in, I don't know, maybe like 15 hours. Let this dry overnight and we'll see what we can do next. And we are back. It's been about like 16 hours since the last part of the video was filmed. And now our dragon is dry. So let's pull this that way and we can actually undo this wire. And what you'll notice is that the wing stays exactly in place. And that is very nice. It's good we let it dry because if it wasn't fully dry, it probably wouldn't do that. Um, so let's unwrap this section too, because the torso is also dry and so is the tail. So basically a lot of the things that we had done um, previously are good to go and are pretty strong now. Now, again, if you realize you messed up on some parts, um, the nice thing about shaping with methyl cellulose is that you can just go back and re-wet it and do it again. Um, there's only a few drawbacks of doing that, such as eventually the paper might get a little bit wrinkly the more MC you put on it. Um, but for things such as like on the inside there, it's not going to matter too much. So I can obviously feel it in my hand, but I'm not sure if you're able to see like how much more durable this is. Like maybe if I bend it like that, you can see how stiff it is versus something that's untreated is very flimsy. Um, we didn't quite put enough in this neck, kind of like I described, but even still, it's already a little bit more resistive. So when we do our second layer, we can definitely, you know, shape it exactly how we would like. Uh, we can even just do that and it's, you can kind of see how it holds its place. So that's one big advantage of letting that dry out. This joint's also very strong. So later on, we can work on finishing up this wing. And then our legs are looking good too. This back leg, I was a little bit worried about earlier, but it's looking mighty fine. And let me just fix the focus a little bit so you can see. There we go. Um, so yeah, it's, it's looking pretty good. We got kind of an angle. It's not as aggressive as maybe I would like, but it should be good enough for us to work on the feet. And then this leg is also a lot more durable in holding position. You noticed I was struggling with it because of how flimsy it was before, but now it is good. And I think it will support the weight once we fold out the claws. So let's get started. Um, let me think what we need to do. Maybe what we can do is actually, yeah, let's work on some of those claws. And one thing I mentioned is that because the torso and wing wasn't set, we couldn't, we had this little flap, which is going to be a back spike. Um, and we couldn't really fold that yet because it wasn't secure, but now that everything is done, we can, and it's getting caught a little bit along the wing, but all I really want to do is know where I'm going to place it. So we're going to just press this against the body to kind of see where it's going to go. And what we're going to do is along this area, that's what we're going to get wet. And the spike is about here, which. I think that looks pretty all right. And so we're going to get it wet, place it there, and then do the same process of drying. So I got my MC, got my brush, and we are set. 
Uh, once again, my brush got a little bit dry, so I'm just getting it wet again before I apply. And then I'm going to apply a generous amount. Not overkill, but a, a fair amount to this, just to soften it back up. And then I'm also going to put some on the surface of where it's going to go. And it's not exactly going to stick the paper together, but it's just going to help guide it in place and allow it another point of contact just to dry like that. All right, so that is our first step. It's really hard to see <laughs> on camera. I mean, I can't exactly hold it at an angle that you can see it, but basically, right, it's giving the body some form. So it's just not layers sticking out into open. And we're gonna dry that with our blow dryer. So we'll be right back. All right, so it is kind of dry. Again, not fully dry, it still needs some time, but dry enough where it's staying put. It's now wrapped around. And that's exactly what we want. And we should be able to work on our claws while that's drying. So let's start off with the back leg just because it's kind of already in place. And maybe I'll be folding it from here. So let me just get the focus a little bit tighter. There you go. And um, what we did previously, I think, and maybe I didn't do it on this side. I think we did it on these fingers up here is we actually treated it uh, just by putting some MC over and let it dry. Now, yeah, I'm guessing we didn't quite do that here, but that's okay. Um, these ones are a little bit cleaner than in the front, so it should be all right. But essentially what we want is we want to find three points like this and then one in the back. Now it already kind of is angled in a way that looks like the foot. However, we want it to really be forward. So if I show the example on that one, you can see, right, it's going forward and it's thinned out. So that's kind of the goal for this one. We need to both thin them out and kind of get them into a flat surface. Like right now, it's obviously not in line with the floor. It would need to be something like this. Um, so this I can just kind of press into place now that this leg has been treated with MC. Uh, but if not, what I would do is I would put a little bit of MC right along like the ankle and we could work on it like that. And then now what I'm going to do is grab my tweezers and this is, you don't need to use tweezers, but it helps. I mean, this is mostly so I can show on camera a little bit easier that we are going to be uh, thinning these flaps out. So let's have it a little bit closer like that. And essentially all I want to do is use my tweezers to start bisecting the angle. So this is a little bit of dry shaping just like that. And then this allows us to pinch all those layers together. Now, if you do this and all your layers come apart, then you might need to do that MC trick where you just MC all the layers first, let it dry fully, and then do this. Um, I actually even recommend that <laughs> with the condition of mine, I probably should have done that as well. Now we have two more toes. Now this one is kind of stuck in between the other one and there's not a whole lot of space to move it. So we're just gonna try to do our best here with thinning it and pulling it through enough that it kind of shows as that middle toe. And then we can kind of do a similar thing with our tweezers here. Try to thin it out a little bit more and get that in place. And that toe is going to show a bit more once we thin this last one out, which is over here. And then same thing with our tweezers. Get that thinned out. Now this one is probably the one that's most likely to open back up. So I'm, actually going to 
probably apply some more MC to it, but we can, we can do a little bit of this first just to kind of get it ready and then MC it. So you can kind of see the folds that I have done. It's helped a little bit at this angle, uh, but it's not really set in place. So that's where our wet shaping is going to come and play. Um, and then we can't forget our last flap, which is back here. This one kind of same thing. You want to thin it. So you use my tweezers like that. Start the fold and then bisect it as much as I can. So it's flat. Now this one, it's okay if this one's a little bit wider. It's actually going to help the foot stand, but you don't want it to splay all the layers out. So be careful there. And again, this will probably be better done once it's wet with MC. So that's exactly what we're going to do now is I'm going to take my methyl cellulose, my brush, get some MC between the layers. Now I don't want these to be too, too wet. Um, just because they're kind of delicate a little bit for now. And then if we need to add more later, we totally can. We don't want to overkill it. So apply gently. And to the back one as well. And now essentially I'm going to keep doing that the same folds I just did, but reinforcing them now with the MC. So they might be easier to hold or harder to hold. And if it's harder to hold, then that generally means you need to let it dry first and then you can try again. Uh, but if it's starting to hold, then you can try to get it into its final position a little bit. And this middle toe is causing us a lot of issues. Uh, it's probably because I just folded too imprecisely, but again, it's kind of okay. You just need to work the other three toes around it to kind of compensate. And I got it a little too wet. You can see how flimsy it is. So that definitely needs to dry before we can make it look any nicer. Um, but for now, I think we're doing okay. There you go. The other toes needs a little bit more MC to kind of hold position. So I'm going to add a little bit more. between these layers and then I am going to blow dry it just like that so let's try to get that to dry in this position and that's looking pretty all right all right so our foot is a little bit more dry now you can see we dried it in a position that's not <laughs> leveled the ground but that's okay we kind of got the toes in place first and then now what we can do is twist it into place it's a little bit better now we got to be careful because it's not fully dry yet so i'm not sure if i should do this yet actually we might need this to be even more dry but what i would do is now take this whole foot and just kind of angle it like that and then dry that. So let's try that. Um, I think it'll be okay. Uh, and as you can see, this is like a process is kind of slow. It's not like you do it and set it once. Um, sometimes it might be if your flaps are nice, but since we kind of had to fix some of our folding, we gotta take it in slow steps. So now I'm gonna turn it. And one way you can test to see if it's okay is I start to put my legs on the floor uh, approximately to what I think it might be like. Now, obviously we have this other leg in the back that's not done yet. 
Um, so it's a little bit more difficult, but at least I can kind of get this foot down and get an idea of what it should look like. Something like this, and then I can dry it in this position. So let's get a little bit more MC right along that ankle. And I'm gonna dry it like this. All right, so our foot is a little bit more in the right direction, but as I was working on it, I kind of discovered that the reason why this middle toe was so short is it's actually supposed to be the one on the side like this. Um, so it was just in a wrong spot. Uh, and now this makes things a lot easier uh, to shape out. So on yours, if you're having a problem similar to mine, just check the different orientation of your toes and claws to see, you know, what layout makes more sense. And this one definitely makes more sense. Now you can see all three toes are much more aligned. And if we bring it back into this orientation, it's a lot more ready to be set into our claws. You can see it from this angle here for sure. Now, one thing I don't really like is I don't like how raised this toe is over the other one. So I'm just going to twist it a little bit to flatten it down. Like that. And I think that looks a little bit better, but it unfolded some stuff. So I'm going to try to fold it back and show that on camera at the same time. That's kind of difficult. And fold this one back. And you can tell these are not dr fully dry yet because of how much they are unfolding and folding back and stuff. But with slow pros progress, we're, we're going to be able to get this nicely. Um, I think I'm going to have to let it dry like this first before I can do any more work on it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply just a little bit more MC and let it stay like this. We're going to apply it to the bottom here and come back to it later, but we can work on some other things while we wait. Just like that. And we don't, I don't think we even have to use the blow dryer. We're just going to let it sit just like that. Now we can start working on our front claws. Now these ones are going to be a little bit easier because they're from the corner and the edge instead of middle flaps like that one. So once again, let's pick our back toe, which is this one. And then we have our three other toes here. One of them kind of pulls to the side and they can just swivel out like that. That's kind of what we did in the dry shaping portion. And then very similarly, we're going to use our tweezers to thin these out individually. So let me try to get something to hold. Now, sometimes when I rest my model, I don't want to rest it like this because it's actually going to start bending this wing back. So I'm going to grab a block like that and let it rest. Small tip while shaping. All right, we got our tweezers and this lets us work on our claws. So once again, we can just use the tweezers to start that little fold. It's kind of like a bisector. It doesn't have to be um, just enough so that we can thin the layers make them very claw like. Here's one. Let's do the middle one now. Now, the claws are a small detail, but I find them to actually be very expressive. When the claws are not clean, it really detracts from the rest of the model. And then when they are clean and like sharp, it adds some ferocity. So spend time on your claws. I can 
oftentimes pick out amateur folders when they post pictures of like their ancient dragons by just looking at their claws. And even people who fold Ryujin, a lot of people don't do much with the claws when they really should. They put that much effort into everything else. Um, and it can often take away from how finished the model looks if it's not that great. And like even my claws right now, they don't look that great. But the fact that I gave them some attention just helps the overall mood, you know. You don't have to do the best claws in the world, but just at least do them a little bit so that it doesn't take away from the rest of your model. Okay, so we thinned these out, and we're not done here. We're actually going to add another detail that I like to do as preference. Uh, but let's just take a look with what we got. So from the top view like that. Now the angle of these, they're facing outwards just a little bit, but that's kind of okay. If you think about if you were to walk on all fours, you don't really have your hands facing in, right? It's a little bit easier if they're out and pushing. Um, I guess may maybe it doesn't matter, but um, as long as it's not like 45 degrees, like it's still kind of putting, pointing in the right direction. And if we need to, we're probably just going to adjust this a little bit and it'll fall in the right direction. And once again, I like to do the test where I kind of just place it down where I think it's gonna be walking. And I think you can't see it because of that head, but like maybe I put my hand here. You can see that it's laying down together. And eventually you want all four, you want to test all four limbs that they're touching the floor. Cause that's another easy mistake I see amateur folders do is they don't make it so that their legs all sit on the floor evenly. So like you can see this one, it sits on all four nicely. Just add some extra grounding, you know, it makes it look better. The concept's called grounding. Okay, so with that, we can do a little bit more on those front claws. And I'm going to use the three-headed dragon as the example again. Now, if we look at the claws on this one, you can see that from underneath, the claw gets really thin and then the very tips get a little bit wider. And honestly, it doesn't look that clean. However, the effect from the top is that you can actually see like the, the talon. It gives a little bit of a, a extra, I don't know, umph, right? So it's, it's not really sharp, but it gives just a slight little detail that, oh, there's some claws. And honestly, the, the cleaner you can make this, the better. But even with this not being as clean, just that small little extra bit, I think, adds to the finished model. Um, you can see it on this one. This one's probably done a little bit better. I spent a little bit more time on this one than the three-headed dragon, right? It's kind of similar, just like a little thickness right at the corner the joint just adds a, another bit of depth to the claws. So we can do that on ours. And all that really looks like is crimping down on the tip a little bit and then holding it closed while you do that crimp. So let me get it to an angle that I can actually hold and show it. It's hard to do this and be in frame for the camera at the same time. So it's kind of like I'm holding here and then I'm going to push down on that to open it. And I actually don't know if I can fully show this <laughs> without blocking it. Uh, let me see if I can maybe hold it this way so you can see the concept. Maybe I shouldn't have done the, the middle toe first, but... Oh, I missed. Um, okay, maybe we're just going to have to do it and then show the result. Okay, there you go. That's that's a way to grab it. It's like that. Pinch right there. There you go. So, something like that. That's not very clean, but I think you get the idea. And then if you want it to be cleaner, basically you would just fold that down and then you get the little sharp points like, like that. 
Uh, but let's try to let's try to do that on all three claws. You can also use the layers that are might be spewing out the side to help widen that claw a little bit before you close it back up. And to close it back up, I'm just repinching the tips in just slightly like that. Kind of see it, right? It's uh, very hard to show, but I think you get the concept. And then once that's done, um, what's happening on my claw is after I did that, it's kind of getting loose. Like these layers are getting kind of loose. They don't really look like the nice leg that that one looks like. So what we're going to do is but now between all of these fingers, when they're replaced, we're going to use our MC. And again, the MC, it's kind of like... You know, whenever you want to hold something in place where it is now, it's really good. You get it wet and then you get it dry and then it stays like that. Like that. And then find a way to hold it in the position I want. And then the last thing to do is to dry it. So we're just going to grab our hair dryer and dry it. All right. So we have let the claws dry a little bit and generally it's looking pretty good. I think uh, it still needs, you know, more work and more tweaking. Uh, and oftentimes it's hard to get it right the first try. And the more you look at it, the worse it ends up looking. So you keep playing around with it until it looks right. So uh, it's kind of the process. Um, one thing I noticed, like for this back toe, it looks kind of awkward. So I'm actually just going to grab a little bit of MC here just on, just on the back toe and kind of angle it more correctly so that it'll dry like that. Um, but yeah, so have a try at some of those claws, have a field day. And what we're going to do is actually, now that these are a little bit more dry, we can do the same thing on these back claws too. Um, so for example, let's get them thin and add just like a little bit of a pinch to it and I think my hand is blocking the camera, but you can kind of get the idea of shaping these down. Now the back claws probably aren't as long as our front claws, or you might find it that it seems that way. Technically they're the same length, but um, there's just more paper going on in these ones. So it's a bit harder to shape as long. Um, so be a little bit more careful on how long you make the little end bits, but at least if you get a little bit in, it kind of adds to the effect of that detail. So I'm just going to do some quickly there, probably change it later. Like I said, um, I go back and shape things a lot after I look at it and realize it's not very good <laughs> and then keep going and keep going until it finally looks good. Um, but yeah, that's essentially the claws. I don't think I want to show this anymore. Uh, so basically like this one is not as good. So spend time doing that, uh, but I don't need to show that on camera. I think we can go ahead and move on to our head and then also our neck later, which I think we can do after we do our head. So let's take a look at our example head from the first one. And you can see that the layers are a lot cleaner. So let's pull it over this way. 
layers are kind of managed, so we don't see them too much. We see them a little bit. It's still a little bit messy. Uh, that's just kind of the nature of it. But we do get the overall aesthetic of where the eye should be, and we really see the teeth. I think that's the most important thing about this dragon head, is that a lot of the uh, uncleanliness is okay if you just make sure that the teeth are really shown. You can see another example on a three-headed dragon. I actually didn't shape this one as much, but it's still relatively clean, and what really stands out is the teeth. So that's, that's the real important part. Let's get to that. So one thing we can do is add MC in between these layers here. So between these layers and then close them up. So that will help reduce a lot of the extra layers that are revealed. So make sure you get some inside like that. And of course you're gonna have to do this on both sides. But for now, it's going to push kind of like this is how it's going to be. Now, you want to make sure it's not too weird of a gap in the middle there. So you're just going to have to kind of eyeball it <laughs> to make sure it's okay. Um, and same thing on the other side. And then we're going to blow dry it to get it dry. So. This one, you kind of want to do both sides at the same time, just so that it's even and you can see that it's even. Just like this. And then after what we just did is dry, I normally go into bottom as well. And that helps to hold the rest of the head in place. It's kind of like that. And now I'm going to go and blow dry it. So we're going to come back when it's dry. All right. So we are back with the head a little bit more dry. I think it still could go further. I think I've said that quite a lot. So hopefully you understand that this takes time. Um, but let's get our MC out. I'm going to hopefully be able to show a little bit more of the head shaping and then we're kind of getting close to finishing the tutorial mostly because you're just going to repeat on the other side and then i'll show the final touches i think um, with like the, the rest of the wing position and kind of just thought process towards a pose but for the most part we are getting there um, i think the main things to really get done is like the rest of the eyes and then the horns and so ideally I think we need to get the eyes in place first uh, so let's again once again take a look at our example you can see that on this one our snout actually tilts upwards instead of tilts down relative to the eyes and I think that makes it really aggressive looking um, on the three-headed dragon, I didn't do that as much, but I think I should have. Um, so if you don't, it kind of looks like that, where the snout is a little bit longer. Um, but it can kind of look strange, like this head in the back, I don't think looks very good. Um, so it's, it's kind of up to you. But I'm going to try to do it like the other two-headed dragon. And basically, um, what it's going to look like... In terms of folding is you're going to have to hold this part closed and almost do like a little crimp right here let me see if i can get it so it's in focus and that the shadow is not blocking um blocking it it's going to be kind of like that and we're going to mc that in place and what we don't want to do is to put it too high where we lose the eyes. Um, but so like somewhere around there, and then we're going to have to fold down the eyes right to there. So this is the flat for the eyes and we're going to fold it down. This means something like, like, like that. So with that in mind, let's get back to folding this. 
And here the MC, I'm going to put it on the top and underneath the eyes. And then right along where that crimp is going to be. Now, because I have all the teeth underneath, I don't really want to put it underneath. We actually want that to still remain kind of strong. All right, and it doesn't really reach all the way up. Maybe what I could do is put some between here. That actually might be a good idea. So we can squeeze it all the way between these layers in the neck. It's a little bit hard to access, but hopefully I can show it like in between these ones. And from there, I'm going to hold it in place like that and let that dry. So once again, we're going to wait for this to dry and come back when it's done. And we are back with our dragon and the head is dry and it is quite solid. So that is really good. Now we're almost done with this head actually. Uh, one thing we can quickly do is fold back down the eyes. So you can see the eye flaps are right there. And sometimes what happens is after you solidify this part of the head, it gets a little bit difficult to fold down the eye. Um, so if you need to, use tweezers to get that in place. But it should just be something like this. Um, do I have my tweezers with me? Yeah, they're right here. And just do the same thing on the other side. You kind of just make it evident that the eye is there. And then the other thing to do is make sure the eye lids or these little ridges help enunciate that there actually is an eye. <clears throat> Oftentimes it can get lost between all the rest of the layers. So you just want to be able to communicate enough that it exists and that it's there. Cool. So that's looking pretty good. Now we can get on to the horns. I'm gonna rest it here so we can see. Now the horns, we're going to get them um, MC'd up. However, just between the outside layers. So kind of similar to what we did before with the legs is we're splitting in the middle right here. And we wanna get MC between this layer and that layer. And then we're going to shape from there. So let's do that really quick. And you don't need a lot of MC for this part. Actually, it kind of relies on how stiff the paper actually is. Uh, we just want it to stay in place later on. We don't want it to get super, super wet where the shape won't hold. And if you do get it wet, again, you can just blow dry it to harden it back up. And that's totally fine. Let get a little bit of MC in there and a little bit in the other area as well just like this there you go and then from here we can start shaping the first one now I'm going to show you what the horns look like on our dragon from this angle and the shaping it's pretty subtle but a slight difference will really you know make or break the shaping so the horns, they go out to the side a little bit and then point up and they're not super thin. There's actually a good width right here. And that's what we want to rely on. Now, if we look at it from this side, they also angle this way. So those two angles are what you have to think about going out to the side and back towards the head. So with that being said, let's take a look at our dragon here. And with it a little bit wet, what we can do is start to angle it outwards a bit. <clears throat> and to do that, there's going to be like a small crimp that forms right there. And it's easier to kind of start that crimp by opening that half layer that we didn't MC and getting that to form the small crimp to the outside like that. And then bring the rest of it along. And the reason why we just do half right now is again, remember we also have to push the horn back towards the head like there. And so that helps in that sense. 
So we have something that looks like this. Now that it's out, I want you to think about like a little curve fold. That's going to be a mountain along this edge. And that's going to bring the tip back that way. It's going to be like just a small, small little angle like that. And then from here, we can start squeezing into the point or the tip of our horn, but we don't want to squeeze all the way. We actually don't want it to be too thin. Otherwise it looks really awkward. And so something just like that. From there, you can do some final adjustments and then also check that it's pushing back towards the head, which that looks pretty good. I think we want it to show a little bit more the side, a little bit more like that. That way it looks good from more angles. Just like that. And we have one horn down. So let's do the same thing on the other horn. Let's get the MC going. There's one. And on this edge. A little bit like that. All right. So we got one side and then the other. And we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to push it outwards with that little crimp. And then grab the rest of the horn. Bring it along. like that. Now it's facing outwards. So we're going to do that small curve fold on the top to start to angle it back in and then pull the point in. <clears throat> there you go. And we went a little bit too pointy on that. We don't want it that pointy. We want it to kind of match the other side. And then from here, I'm just going to eyeball it to kind of match these two horns together so that they look pretty cohesive. Just like that. Maybe a little bit more on that end. And then once again, we're going to check that it faces this way. So you can see this one is facing that way. This one's kind of just sticking straight up. So we need to get it to lie down a little bit more on this side. Now, massage it into place basically. And if it's not staying in place, you can always use some more MC to kind of help it out. All right, and so that's looking pretty good. You know, we can always add some adjustments later or once it starts to dry a little bit, we can do some other tuning. But that's generally it for our horn. And I think that's looking pretty decent for a head. Uh, we can't really tell where the eye is on, on this head, so that's a little bit unfortunate, but at least we have this that might be able to communicate that there's an eye there. Um, I think I made the eye flap a little too small. So if you need some reference on a better one, you can check that out. But a lot of it has to do with how the light's bouncing off of that fold. So you can definitely play around with it to get it to be okay. All right, and last thing we're going to do, let's clean up the neck. So one thing that we might notice is that the neck, it's a little bit too thick. I think compared to the head, even on compared to our other Dragon, we could see that we narrowed out the neck just a little bit at the base of the head. Um, and I think that looks a little bit better. We can also look at the three headed one. It's a little bit more proportional if we thin it out slightly. And to thin it out, all we really have to do is combine the layers together. So see how the layers are all open like this. Uh, we can grab some MC and essentially close it. 
and wrap these folds. Just push them down a little bit as they're wet and it's going to help thin it a little bit. If you want to be extra clean, you can actually just mount and fold these in uh, to the neck, which actually might be a good idea. So let's get them wet and then we can do that. So previously we had emceed a lot of this, so it's definitely a little bit rigid, but it's going to soften back up once we apply some more MC back onto it. You just got to give it like a second or two to soak into the paper. And then you'll be able to do it. Now we don't want to get the entire thing re-wet because we still have some form that we want to use. Um, so don't do the entire thing. I'm just going to do like these big open layers because we're going to eventually close them as well. All right, so now they're a bit more wet and I'm just going to like mount and fold that corner down so it's less harsh. And then do the same thing on the other side, about even. And fold it inwards into the head. So that it just softens that back spine a little bit. And then after that, we're going to hold the rest of the layers together so that it's, it's not that like really ugly kind of line going through and then kind of redo that curve that we'd wanted earlier and for here you're probably just going to have to hold on to it for a little while and then let it dry so that it dries in place otherwise it's going to reopen again um, so that's what i'm going to do quickly Let's just hold that in place and blow dry it and then i'm also going to reinforce the bottom a little bit uh, let me see show here and actually let's show this now and i'm also going to curve the bottom of the neck in so you can see these flaps are sticking up i'm just going to make them go flush into the neck and that's going to help it as well as add some mc into the layers underneath to help hold the curve so we can do like three things at once for the neck and that should finish up um, the whole neck and head area pretty much and it's just gonna have to dry so just like that and again remember methyl cellulose it doesn't really stick things together so you really just got to let it dry in place um, and if you rush it it probably will pop back open but you can just try it again let it dry like that so get it into a good hold um, you know, this might be a time where you want to put a clip, but I don't recommend that because it's probably going to leave a mark if you use one of those clips. So just be careful and a little bit patient and you'll be okay. All right, we're going to come back. I'm going to blow dry this and let it dry. And we are back with the neck a bit more dry. It's pretty solid now. And we have our head nice. And nice as well and generally we won't have to touch the head anymore until the very end where we're posing our dragon now the reason i say that is because if i pretend this side of the dragon is standing that head is pretty close to the ground and it's also like looking straight at the ground too which we may or may not want you know sometimes dragons are looking at the ground if they're really big they're looking at maybe like a small animal down below but it kind of depends and we won't really know until the end but for now let's just keep it like that uh, because we'll have room later now the last thing i'm going to show is just the rest of this wing and so the easy portion is going to be this part here which is going to be very similar to the branch of our wing is we're just doing some layer management and then we also have our claws. Now our claws are very similar to our claws on our legs, our toes. These are like the wing talons, I guess. Um, and it's the exact same shaping process, including that extra detail at the tips. And you can really see on this one that they are quite effective. And honestly, they don't look very good without them. So make sure you go and do that. I'm not really going to show that um, since I've shown that before. Um, and we can do that afterwards as well. But at least for the rest of the wing, I'm going to get the layers 
um, wet with MC and on the underside as well, as well as on this side. Just get it in between layers. We want it to be nice and strong. Just like this, get it all around. And then some at that base angle here. And this would be the time where if you need to adjust anything for your specific pose on the wing, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, yours might not exactly be like mine. Um, and then what we're going to do is try to get the layers all together. And it looks like this side doesn't have enough MC. There you go. That's a little bit better. And this is another thing where since it's really wet, we're going to have to let it dry overnight um, to really see the benefits of it. But that is totally fine because we're not really going to be messing with this part of the wing much. All right, so something like this. We have that weird gap in the middle that I don't... There you go. And just make it a little bit cleaner. It's like that. Smooth out what you want to smooth out. Get the layers to close with what you want. And that looks pretty good. We might come back later and fix the other side, but at least from the angle we're going to be viewing at most, Looks just okay. And then something to tack on is now we're going to clean up all these extra little pleats on the wing as well. And this you have to be a little bit more delicate. So you're gonna take your MC and you just want to fill in between the pleats on these wings. Cause basically we're trying to flatten them down as much as possible so that there's almost no seam where that you almost can't notice the pleats there so just a little bit like that and press it down try to get it to sit pretty flat into the paper and then leave it alone so that it can dry and we're going to do this with all those pleats. So I'm going to quickly do it. It might not be very good when I do it quickly, but hopefully you get the idea. So on yours, you can take some time, be slow with it. You're not supposed to do this fast, but for the sake of showing it in the tutorial, I'm just going to do all of them. <clears throat> Sometimes I even wait to do each one. Normally I, I, I do this very slowly. A very, I think slow, slow is better. If you're doing it fast, uh, don't be proud of doing it fast. Um, there's no merit. It's, it's much better to be slow. Right, and the curves on the wing might start to undo themselves a little bit. Let me get a better focus. And if they do, you just kind of have to fold them back. So that's kind of a lot easier to do once it's locked in. Can't really see because the wing is under there, but I'm just gently pressing the layers together. like that. And we just wait. Now I'm not blow drying this part because the blow dryer actually won't get the layers to really stick onto the paper. It'll just blow air in between them. So that is not quite our goal. So this is just a, this one's just a waiting game basically. Yeah. 
and it might not be perfect, but just try, get what you can. Um, you can see the reference on this one, right? You can still kind of see those layers popping through, but we really defined these ones so that they kind of shine through a bit better. Uh, you can't you can't escape all of it. Uh, maybe if it was a different color sheet, it won't show as well, but that's kind of okay. Again, it's more going to be a trick of the lighting <laughs> for how good this turns out. All right, so that is pretty much it on the wing. We just need to let it dry, and then we're going to probably refold some of these to make it more aggressive. And then after the wing dries as well, we have the claws. Um, and then, of course, we have the entire other side of the dragon, uh, which is going to be the exact same. Um, so I guess for this side, I'm just going to tell you to do the exact same thing on the other side and I won't actually show in the tutorial. Um, the one thing that we haven't really finished up yet is this tail. So let's do that before I tell you to just finish off the other side and then we'll come back for some final shaping, but the tail's not too difficult. Let me get this a little bit like that. There you go. You can see it. So, uh, There we go. The tail, we have a couple options. Um, let's take a look at our two dragons here. So they are mostly the same tails, just sli shaped slightly differently. So this one is very rounded with just thinned out spikes. And then this one has more of a spine running through the middle and spikes jutting out to the side. Um, you can pick whatever you want. Uh, the main key is to just do something with it. So I'm going to start off by applying some MC. Makes it a little bit more shapeable for us. Get that a little bit wet. And since there's a lot of layers sticking out here, we want to just fill in those layers so that it behaves appropriately. Just like that. And then also in between each spike. And I know I'm going out of frame a little bit and the other wing is blocking it, but you know, I think you guys have a fair idea on, on this. It's not a, not a beginner tutorial. So you should have an idea of what I'm doing without me really having to show it. Just like that. There you go. And once those are starting to set and even dry a little bit, since we didn't use too much, we can start to shape just the points a little bit. And then we probably have to wait for it to dry more to actually get uh, any thinning down. But we can tuck some of those layers in, just overall thin out the tail into a spike. Same thing here, you can pull these into slightly thinner spikes. Right, I'm kind of just bisecting them while wet. And something like that will be fine. Um, I might have to clean this up a little bit later. So if I look on this side, there's a couple extra layers out here. Um, so I'm going to get those wet and just kind of tuck them underneath the entire tail. And then just let that dry along with our wing. Tuck 
tuck in that extra paper. And there we go. I'm actually just flattening this out with the paper tucked in so that it dries like that. And then we're going to shape it after it's dry. Should be just fine. Um, this wing is already starting to dry up a little bit. It's going to need a lot more time before we really touch it. All right. Well, that is a majority of the tutorial. So what we're going to do is we have a very nice you know, left side of our dragon, except for the claws, uh, wing talons up here, because we have to wait for that to dry. And then we have a completely unfinished right side. So this is the part of the video where it's like it's repeat steps, you know, 200 to 800 on the other side or whatever, how long this tutorial was. Um, go ahead and, and do that. Have some fun with it. You can either do the exact same thing we did on the left side or you can change it up just slightly so for example on this dragon the stance of the legs on the left side is a little bit um, tighter than the stance on the right side and this just basically allows you to see all the legs when you pose it like that and it helps the body to just kind of be more rounded um, like it's kind of trying to turn around or turn to the side. So feel free to do what you think looks good is ultimately what you should be doing and go ahead and finish that up. And we're going to come back when the, it's pretty much all done, or at least it's mostly shaped. And then I will show you just how to do some final touches, such as getting all the legs, you know, flat on the floor and that'll be the tutorial. So I'll see you in like, you know, six hours or so. And we are back with our two headed dragon and I've shaped the other side. Now we can see, I kind of chose a similar pose to our original, um, just to kind of keep it cohesive. But even though we shaped it, it's not all done. There are still some mistakes that I, or not really mistakes, but just things I think could be better. Can you pick them out? Well, try to think about it for a little bit and see if you got it right when I point them out as we finish up this tutorial. So it might be a little bit hard to tell from this angle, all the things going on with the heads, but at least what we can notice at first is the wings. So we have some pretty decent wings on this dragon. However, I think they're pointed a little bit too long and it makes it kind of awkward having them be this long. You can see it's actually intercepting with the body here. Um, and I think the solution to that would be something I did on this dragon that I totally forgot I did, which is I actually just folded the wing. So I didn't even use all the paper. I just folded it underneath and then shaped it as if it wasn't there. So in this case, basically like right around here, I just folded that to the other side, forgot it existed and just shaped like normal wing. Um, now that's an option. So if you've done this with only MC, you can technically, you know, MC it, get it wet and do the exact same process and just undo all your folds. But since I'm teaching this for the tutorial, I'll keep it like this. I think it still looks okay. It's just a little bit awkward. Now, the next thing to notice, which you can actually still see from the top is the tail. So the tail is way too high. It is not touching the ground. And again, I've discussed a little bit about the concept of having your model grounded. Generally that is all four legs touching the floor, but also the tail, because if we do the side angle, it looks really strange with the, um, like, let's try to make an imaginary floor. That one looks good. But this one looks really strange with detail so high off of the floor. You know, um, if it was being dynamic, like maybe it was faced up for some reason and he's moving, then that would make sense. But because it's kind of a static pose, it should be resting down below. So we can fix that. Another thing we could do is the legs are decent. It's actually kind of naturally grounded. Um, this leg needs a little bit more shaping. It's a little bit too thick compared to this leg, 
but generally, you know, it's about grounded. Um, maybe we can look at it from here. The, the one thing I don't like is that this leg faces inwards. So it's grounded, but it's applying pressure this way, and it actually makes it look like he's almost tripping over his feet. So I'm going to want to widen this out a little bit. I'll show how I'm going to approach that. And the last thing is, again, when we're talking about being grounded, his face is in the floor, and we do not like that. That's not very good. That his almost It's like he's eating the floor, you know? Um, we are not intending to have him posed like that. You know, if I was creating a scene where he's like actually eating something, that might be a different story, but just leaving it like this looks really incomplete and pretty bad. So we're going to just tilt the neck up a little bit. And um, again, I'll show how I approach that as well. The first thing I want to fix though is the tail. And I think that's a pretty easy fix. And what we're going to do is get this area wet with MC and just kind of swivel down a little bit and that should be enough. And now um, this is one benefit of using MC is we can just go back and do this. So let's get that started. I've got my MC right here. Now I'm not gonna get the entire tail wet. I'm just kind of thinking on the inside where the kind of twist and swivel is gonna happen. And if I need to do more after, I can I can always do that too. Let's get some MC on there just to soften it up. You can kind of start to see what I'm doing. See the paper is getting wet. And I'm just feeling out with my fingers like where, again, tension points are. So I'm going to need a little bit more MC here. Get it a little bit loose. like that and what I like to do is I have my dragon kind of on the floor and I'm seeing how much it needs to bend down to the floor so about that much I'm also going to uh, do I want to angle that a little bit too I, I'm not sure if we want to do this I think it's fine starting to stick out like that and then just curves down so Let's try that. There we go. And then I'm feeling a lot of tension right here. So I'm going to get this wet as well. Now, if you don't know what I mean by where I feel tension, that's just going to be something that comes with practice. I think I've mentioned it quite a lot in this tutorial. So hopefully over, over the course of you shaping this model, which sh should be quite at least a couple hours, um, Hopefully you've gained kind of an idea of what I'm talking about and or at least gotten some experience with thinking about that, even if it doesn't fully make sense yet. All right, so that's about right. And what I'm going to do is now blow dry that in place. So just like before, we'll be right back. And it is kind of dry, not fully dry. I just blow dried it so it's staying in place. But... I think you can tell that like I can't shoot my hand underneath this tail anymore and it is just about touching the ground. I gave it just a little bit of clearance because the body itself is just going to get lower when we fix that back leg. Now, next, um, what can we do? Let's fix the head. So right now the face is like, you know, facing right into the floor. So let's fix that. Now, I think the approach I want to do is uh, lift this section of the neck so he's facing up. So that'll be just a very slight minor change. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push the head in and then basically shove it up a little bit. And if that doesn't um, you know, change the neck enough, then what we can do is we can get involved in that area and just kind of swivel the whole thing upwards as well. But let's try just in the neck area, I think. Um, or like the, the base of the head area. I think that should be enough. So we're going to get this wet around here. Yep. 
And then also underneath. And underneath, we really want to get in between these layers. So I'm trying to get in between the head layers quite a bit. It's already starting to soften up a bit. And let's see what we can do. So I'm not sure how this is exactly going to look on camera. It might look like me just shoving the head backwards, but it's, uh, it's kind of that just with um, some direction, some idea. And what I'm trying not to do is I don't want to mess up the eyes too much. So I'm not trying, I'm trying not to squeeze too hard along where the eyes are in the neck. And basically once I find something I'm kind of happy with, which is like around there, I am going to hold that in place and then blow dry it. And I think what I'm going to do is also add just a bit more MC just to this area to really keep it locked in place. So that's all MC'd up and we are now once again going to come back when it's dry. And we're back and the head is a bit more fixed. So, you know, it's still aiming a little bit down, but it's not face first into the floor. And that's kind of what we want. Um, you can see it's, it's similar to this one now where the heads are generally kind of looking down because uh, they're meant to be big, but there's enough room that it makes sense. So I think that is good enough on both of the heads. I think I just need to fix the eye on this one, but I'm going to do that once it dries overnight because I don't want to mess up the work I just did. Um, and I think for the last part, besides just cleaning up some of the legs, which I'm not going to bore you all with, um, is we're just going to widen the stance. So if we look at it from the top down, you can't really see the legs at all. But if you look at this one, you can see how wide that stance is, right? Now, we probably won't make it as wide, but I do want it to be a little bit wider. And let me grab something to show you what I'm going to do. So I have some of these clips that I've shown previously. And I'm just going to grab a couple. And the thing I like about these is that you can kind of fit them between the legs like this. Kind of stack them up. So from the, I can't really see from the top angle, but basically what I'm doing is I'm fitting them in between the legs and we could do even like three, for example. And then I would just put it down like that, make sure it's grounded. And that's already widening the base of the legs. Again, you can't see it because of the, the wing is in the way, but I think it makes sense from what I just showed. And then basically if I leave it like this, I can just MC on the top edges where some of the, like the hips are basically, and it's going to widen the base. And then I can do the same thing with the front legs like this. And that's going to widen it a little bit too. I'm actually going to flip this around where it's a little bit wider. Just like that. Now, sometimes when you do this, it's going to be hard for your model to remain grounded. It might lift or something. So if you really need to, you could probably get like, say another one and, and just balance it really gently between the uh, back spines and it's going to hold its weight down just a little bit. And I'd say just do that as it's drying. Um, obviously I need to apply the MC first. So let's do that really quick. And I'm kind of just going to do it yeah, right along the hips, which um, again, you might not really be able to see, but I think this makes sense to you. Um, maybe we can get this wing slightly out of the way, just like around there. And we can be pretty generous with how much we put. since it's holding. 
And then also, maybe we can just coat like the back of the knee joint ish area or whatever this would be called, just cause that also has a little bit of tension on it and do the same thing with the front legs. So I'm doing this one. Now the front legs, the tension points are a little bit different. So you might have to play around with that a little bit. And then kind of around there. All right. And now I can kind of just let it sit. Uh, my camera is really out of focus, but I think you get the idea. Um, and once again, we're going to come back when it's dry. And we are back for the last time with our completed two-headed dragon. So we applied those fixes, including widening the base of the feet. You can see now it is actually past the shoulders before it was something like that. Now it's out there. Everything is relatively dry and it is looking pretty nice. Now you can see these are about the same, but even still there is some subtle differences between the two. So yours might not exactly look like mine, but I encourage you to spend more time even just after this tutorial to keep shaping it until you are satisfied with how it looks. And once you are at that point and you think it looks pretty good, then call it a day and call it complete. But overall, this was quite the experience, quite the tutorial to do. Um, i give you a round of applause if you've actually made it all the way through this video. And once again, don't forget that the first 10 people to post will receive the one-headed dragon and three-headed dragon crease patterns. But without further ado, I'm going to start wrapping up this tutorial and just thank you all once again. Um, if you have found this tutorial helpful, it's required so many hours to produce and a lot of thought in how to actually explain the different techniques I use and the different processes I do to collapse and shape this dragon. So drop a subscribe if you haven't already. You know, you can even send this to your friends to show them that, hey, I folded this tutorial. It's pretty crazy. Have a look. You know, just let people know um, about this design and about this tutorial. And that helps me a ton. And I will be very, very thankful for that. And if you want to help out a little bit more, feel free to consider joining the OBB competition or joining my YouTube membership. Um, that would be awesome as well. But if not, just drop a like, leave a comment about what you think about this design. And thanks for watching. You know, that helps me out too. So that wraps up this lengthy tutorial. It's all done. Congrats. We did it. We made it all the way through and there's going to be more tutorials coming soon. Probably not as intense as this one, but still pretty challenging and thorough. That's all from me, Origami by Boyce, and I will see you in the next video. All this origami. All this origami, all this origami got me going kamikaze now I'm